Hello guys, what a brand new video from me, Pickles Parker Reviews. Now, I was uh, had nothing to do the other day, so I just decided, quite randomly really, to rewatch The Dark Knight. And I do think it's great, but I must say that I have always kind of preferred Batman Begins um, to watch, although I would say The Dark Knight is, you know, a better film. But watching it, I just thought The Dark Knight... It's just such a great film, not just a superhero film, but just a great film, just generally, and it deserves all the credit it gets. But one thing that really, you know, uh, stuck out to me was Heath Ledger's Joker. Now, I, I don't know if I've said this before on the channel, but I've always kind of said that he's my favourite Joker, or kind of tied with Jack Nicholson, really. Um, and I have liked him, but I haven't watched The Dark Knight for a long while, so I always remembered him being good, but I never quite remembered quite specifically why he was just so amazing. Watching The Dark Knight again just made me, you know, think that he is so great. And I think also looking at Joaquin Phoenix's, you know, upcoming Joker movie uh, coming late this year, um, just made me kind of think, you know, uh, how many elements should Joaquin Phoenix take from Heath Ledger's Joker? Um, to make his Joker. Obviously, in this film, they lose the whole Joker origin story. Uh, obviously, the classic tale, he falls into a vat of chemicals, bleaches his skin white, you know, gives him the green hair, the permanent red grin, and he's the clown prince of crime. And obviously, different versions of the tale, obviously, pinpoint different ways in some he's the criminal of the red hood and uh, so he's already criminal before he goes in some he's already insane he goes in and it's just cosmetic effects in this they ditch that entirely which was obviously a good move uh, because obviously they're in this grounded batman universe that christopher nolan was trying to create um it the classic origin story as much as i do like it was never truly going to work for this film a lot of people doubted that christopher nolan could pull off the joker while of the silliest and most outlandish comic book characters of all time in this grounded setting but he did so masterfully um and i think that you know how he's portrayed um, in terms of his origin and the slight changes to his character, um, I think really make an impact to just why he not only works so well as an antagonist in this film, but why he just works as, you know, such a great version of the character. But going back to the origin stories, obviously they got rid of the whole, you know, uh, falls into a vat of chemicals, but what was a clever move if they didn't try and uh, you know, replace that with a more grounded origin story. What they do is they don't really give you an origin story at all because it's not what was before that's important. It's what's here now. It's what the Joker is now that's important. You know, what he was before isn't important. And in theory, uh, nothing that he was really before or in any time in the past is like it resembles who he is now. That's why the Joker doesn't have a name, um, which is something... I'm a bit slightly, you know, not annoyed, but disappointed with, with this new Joker movie because obviously his name is Arthur Fleck. Obviously with this being centered on the Joker's origins, there wasn't a way they possibly could have got away from that. But I do prefer when the Joker goes nameless. It's the same in Batman 1989 um, with Jack Nicholson's Joker, with Jack Napier. Or I, I would have kind of preferred if they just don't name the Joker, because the Joker's his name, that's what's important now, the here and now. And I do like not only that they don't give him an origin story to try and compensate for the slightly more outlandish, you know, falls into a vat of chemicals classic origin story, but they also, you know, they do kind of allude to it slightly, but almost the fact that, you know, even the Joker may not truly remember how it came to be. He gives two, um, theories um about how he got these scars well you look nervous is it the scars you want to know how i got them and i think it's great that it just seems that he could be spouting just a load of rubbish that he's just making up because maybe the joker truly doesn't know how he became the joker you know obviously there's the one about his dad and how his dad was a drinker and then put you know the knife in his mouth and said why so serious such interestingly 
uh, why that quote, why so serious, is so associated with Heath Ledger's Joker, because he only says it once in the film, um, I'm pretty sure, um, or it might be twice, but it's not like a major catchphrase, although I do think it was quite prevalent in the marketing, come to think of it, after looking at a few, you know, uh, movie posters and things. He does, obviously, he puts the blade in his mouth and that's how he gets it, but then when speaking to Rachel, he gives another, you know, story, which uh, is slightly different, where his wife uh, got scars, um, and he really wanted to tell her just how much he loved her, and that he didn't care about the scars, so he gave the grin himself, and then she couldn't stand him. And both of these are kind of, like, polar, to each other, um, and, you know, both of them, uh, you kind of think, you know, which of that, you know, which of them is true, but the most likely thing is what I like to think, is that neither of them is true, or they could just be slight exaggerations of the truth, maybe both of them could be kind of combined somehow, but not all of the elements are truthful, um, which I think just adds a bit of an air of mystery to the Joker's character, that you don't know who he is, you don't know, you know, his name, who he was before, you know, what his possible motives could be, because you just don't know who he is. He, he is, you know, the Joker, this man who's hell-bent on, you know, making the world burn. Alfred, uh, you know, delivers that great line, it's probably the best line in the movie, or one of the best lines in the movie, you know, some men just want to watch the world burn. And it's such a, you know, a great, you know, description of the Joker's character, and there are also a load of great descriptions of the Joker's character. Another one where the Joker, you know, I'm pretty sure says to Harvey Dent, um, when the Joker's dressed up as a nurse when Harvey Dent's in hospital, um, he says he's an agent of chaos. And it feels like both Heath Ledger and, you know, Christopher Nolan, despite changing slight aspects of the character, really know deep down who the Joker is and what makes him so special as a villain. But going now on to the portrayal, I really like how the Joker is presented as more than just a criminal. The Joker has it in his line, he's like, all you care about is money, uh, you make me sick. Gotham needs a better class of criminal, and I'm gonna give it to him. And that's what he does. Uh, I think that, you know, it just shows the Joker isn't someone, he's not a gang boss, you know, he's not someone who just wants money, although at the start you may think he just wants the money, and he does said that he, he, you know, used Maroney's money to buy him, you know, the purple coat. Um, but that's another thing, comparing him to Jared Leto's Joker, and why I dislike Jared Leto's Joker so much, or just one of the reasons I dislike Jared Leto's Joker so much, which slightly brought more to the surface after I watched this, but was Jared Leto's just, you know, presented as a kind of glorified, you know, monster, crime boss. Uh, but in this film, it really just shows how much more the Joker is than Maroney or any of the other crime bosses. You know, he's above them. And I really like it. It really, you know, shows how special the Joker is. I really like him as this agent of chaos. You know, this person, you, you know, he, he constantly, you know, subverts uh, not our, just our expectations, but, you know, the actual Gothamites in The Dark Knight, you know, because he's always lying, he's always got another thing up his sleeve, like, he keeps on saying he'll kill more people, you know, until Batman's unmasked, but he doesn't want Batman, you know, to be unmasked at all, um, and, you know, he keeps on doing things to play with everyone's mind, um, and, you know, his plan to show the darker sides of everyone, to show that everyone is, you know, like uh, you know, criminals, that everyone can be swayed to the dark side, culminates in that brilliant scene, uh, with the two boats, which I absolutely love, it's such an intelligent plan by the Joker, and, and, you know, it truly makes you think, what would I do in that situation, you know, you've got those criminals there, yes, but you've also got the guards, but also there's a reason these criminals aren't dead, um, you know, so it's truly they deserve to live, but also you've got the citizens, um, you know, of Gotham on that other boat, and I suppose if you were on that boat, you'd kind of think, you know, well, they, they are criminals, so surely we should deserve to live, but that you're making you, th he's making you think like him, and trying to rationalise killing someone, which, you know, is not right, the Joker truly brings out the darker nature in these people, um, and, you know, he truly wins, despite the fact no one blows up the boat. Um, the Joker does win in the end with the creation 
of Harvey Dent into Two Face, um, which I do quite like Two Face's inclusion of the film. I really like the focus on Harvey Dent, and although Two Face isn't even in it that much, and obviously these films aren't comic accurate because Two Face is created and died quite quickly. You know, he's not a massive born in Batman side like um, obviously he is in the comics, but I really like how they handle him here how the Joker creates him and he's just trying to get revenge on who, you know, killed Rachel or what he thinks. And I really like the Joker's line where he's talking to Batman and he's like, you know, he took Gotham's white knight and put him down to their their level. And he said it wasn't hard, you know, madness, all it needs is a little push. And it just shows, you know, the Joker's, you know, his mindset and his beliefs but, you know, just how easy it is. And in fact, maybe the Joker isn't quite as strange or as abnormal as he seems. And another great scene, which I think is absolutely perfect, is the interrogation scene, um, where obviously, you know, the Joker literally just plays with Batman's mind, and he's just, you know, taking the piss out of this situation where he's like, you know, don't go for the head first, you know, it'll just make the person who you're interrogating all fuzzy, and it's just great stuff. And I've heard people say that it kind of alludes to him being slightly a war veteran, I don't know how much, you know, uh, that theory actually appeals to me, but um, there's certainly hints there, although I'm not sure that's actually what Christopher Nolan wanted to go for, but there's definitely wild, you know, bits of his character to, you uh, you know, try and bring up various different theories, you know, there's, there's no signs that particularly nail down a particular origin. That interrogation scene is great, and just... You know, just generally when he's in the GCPD, um, or is it Major Crimes? I think it might be Major Crimes, actually. But, you know, when he's held there, he puts the, the phone in that guy. Um, and, you know, just how he can, you know, uh, get out of situations, persuade people, you know, make them play his games. I just think shows just how powerful the Joker as a character is. And although he may not have the origin, and, you know, he may not have the, the classic look, Although I do think his, you know, um, his makeup give him quite a sinister look to him. But I think it's sinister and kind of modernised in the right way compared to Suicide Squad's horrendous uh, just visual look of the Joker. I hate the tattoos, I hate the grills, I hate the slick back green hair, I hate, you know, that he's all beefed up. And I hate that he just goes around wearing this, you know, scaled version of the classic purple coat, um, you know, with a bare chest, that's not the Joker, but I really like with this, despite the fact they modernised it a bit, they grounded it a bit, you know, it still looks quintessentially Jokery, but despite whatever the appearance might be, Heath Ledger's Joker and the characterization just makes it scream the classic character we all know and love. While I won't like Joaquin Phoenix's Joker to write out copy Heath Ledger's Joker because I did say in a previous video about you know the uh, pictures that had been leaked but we can presume they're basically released of Joaquin Phoenix's Joker in costume that it did have a slightly uh, resemblance to Heath Ledger's Joker and perhaps if they were maybe just copying parts of that into their own Joker movie so I don't want them to, you know, copy and paste Heath Ledger's Joker into Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. But I think there are certainly a lot of elements here, the agent of chaos, you know, the unpredictability, um, and just how he, how much power he has, um, how he manipulates people, um, that I just would really want them to take into that movie, because those aspects introduced, well, not introduced, but really brought to the forefront in The Dark Knight and Heath Ledger's portrayal are some of my favourite aspects of the classic comic book villain. So, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed uh, this video. I was just watching The Dark Knight and I thought, I love Heath Ledger's Joker. I thought, why not do a video on it? Especially as uh, later on in the year we'll have, we're will have having the, uh, you know, the Joker movie. So I could slightly give a, like, you know, a bit of comparisons and things. And I just love Heath Ledger's Joker, you know. I always thought he was good. But going back and watching that, I just thought, yeah, that's why people say he's one of the best Jokers, if not the Joker. And that's why Heath Ledger's turn is such a definitive portrayal. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, leave a like and drop a sub and hit that notification button to stay notified for all my latest videos. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this on DC and various other topics, then stay on and watch some more videos. But uh, of course, thank you guys for watching. Um, and of course, 
Bye.